Yes, Gawa. <laughs> This video is a quick overview of the web server built into the MPIEC controller. Connect the PC to the controller, enter the controller IP address in your browser, and the web server gives you access to many of the critical functions of the controller. No software on your PC other than Internet Explorer and Java 6 is required. You can troubleshoot and clear alarms, monitor and test servo motion, set and restore servo parameters, and backup or restore the project. You can do with the web server pretty much everything except to edit and monitor the code itself. In this video, I'll go sequentially from top to bottom through the pages listed on the left side. I'm connected to an MP2300 SIEC controller, which is already programmed and running. The welcome page here confirms the controller and firmware version. Features of the web server may be slightly different between controller models, and firmware levels. Log into the web server with username admin with capital A and password MP2300S, all caps. Different MPIEC controllers have different default passwords. We're using the MP2300 SIEC controller in this example. Machine operations is one of the most useful pages in the web server, and it does require Java Feedback data for each axis updates at the top, and motion can be tested only when the stop switch is on. Enable the axis, set a target position, and click move. This feature proves whether or not the controller is capable of moving the servos. The units of motion match the axis configuration and are not displayed, so if you don't know the units, use caution when setting the target position increasing only by a small amount at first. When feedback position matches target position, you know the move was successful. Machine operations also displays access alarm codes and descriptions. Individual access alarms can be cleared or all alarms can be cleared. Reset ServoNet causes the controller to reconnect all Mechatrolink devices and in the process reboots and reconnects Sigma 5 servos the resultant warning can be cleared. At the bottom of machine operations are several tabs with features for data log, access parameters, I.O. and diagnostics. Data log start logging lets you graphically monitor servo access motion and I.O. data. Set trigger and click start to log. Motion from the controller's perspective can be analyzed within the web server. FFT analyzes resonant frequencies. Save log produces a CSV text file to view in any external software. Access params allows access to a subset of parameters, but use with caution as the settings here will not be saved in the controller or the project file. The same is true for parameters changed within the drive PN page. Use MotionWorks IEC to save and set parameters. Apps Encoder Init and Multi-Turn Reset are the most important items on this page. Motor replacement or cable disconnection will produce a special alarm, A810, and possibly ACC0, which can be cleared by these functions. The I.O. tab shows status of the inputs and outputs for servo pack terminals and functions up at the top, and for LIO cards at the bottom. This is useful for testing the inputs. Output can be set as hex values. And remember all of this time that the stop switch should be on to prohibit the code from overwriting the outputs. Diagnostics shows the memory usage and FDS stands for file descriptors, which can aid in advanced ethernet debugging. Moving out of machine operations, alarm status is the quickest way to troubleshoot and clear alarms. If the controller's ALM light is on, this page shows the code and description with details as applicable. The alarm code shows a handy tooltip. Alarm reference is a table of all possible alarms and fault codes with description and detail. Very specific alarm codes provide the information necessary to help expedite troubleshooting. 
Alarm history shows a record of all alarms encountered by the controller along with timestamp. Debugging output is useful to see confirmation of the controller's system level operations since the last reboot. Axis Grid shows servo product hardware information for the connected axes. Wondering what the part number, output rating, or encoder resolution is? You'll find all that information right here without straining to see nameplates on the installed amplifiers and motors. IO Grid displays the devices such as servo packs or cards in the slot and hardware ID. Configuration Sets shows the XML files on the controller that define the properties of the hardware connected to the slots, Mechatronic Network, and other information. Viewing or deleting these files is not generally recommended. The default set is permanently on the controller. A file in default will be used only if the same file does not exist in startup. Startup is written by MotionWorks IEC when the hardware configuration is saved. The Disco or Discovery set updates to find new hardware when the config switch is on at reboot. Drive Parameters lets you write a default set of parameters to the servos or write the user parameters from the controller XML files to the servos. Verify compares the parameters currently on the servo to the default or user parameters. The lowest number parameter that does not match will be shown. It is a good idea to verify that the user parameters on the controller match the parameters on the servos before backing up the system in Project Archive. If a servo pack is replaced, simply write the user parameters and reboot the system. Ethernet config shows your IP address and subnet mask. The default gateway address is used when the controller is on a network with a gateway device, which serves as an access point to another network. If there is no gateway, set the address the same as the IP address, or you will get a gateway not found alarm, 3407-0204. The time in set clock applies to alarm history and debugging output. To synchronize with network time server, keep in mind that the controller itself must have access to the time server. Project Archive allows you to back up and restore the entire system with one file. These are all the files used to run the controller. All data files visible here, such as CAM files, will be stored in the Project Archive. Browse to select your archive file and send to the controller as a clean install, which first wipes out the old files. Add Replace will keep, for example, any data files on the controller that do not exist in the archive. After the archive is installed on a newly commissioned system, use the Drive Parameters page to send the archive's servo parameters. Reboot is required for the archive to run. Firmware update is not required or recommended on a controller operating in the field. However, the programming engineer will want to get the latest firmware from yaskawa.com during application development. To update the firmware, you have to reboot in what's called supervisor mode. After reboot and reconnection, in update firmware, browse for and open the firmware file, Upload it to the controller, confirm the version, update, and wait for completion. And one final reboot is required to return back to normal operation mode. Initialize SRAM clears the battery backed memory, such as the retained variables and zero point offsets. This operation is not normally required unless there is a persistent alarm relating to the SRAM. If you're trying to return the controller to factory default, a better option is to use the MotionWorks IEC Hardware Configuration Online Menu Controller Configuration Utilities. Reboot Controller is a common task during setup, configuration, and troubleshooting. As part of the reboot sequence, it also reboots all Sigma 5 servos. This one reboot is equivalent to a system power cycle, but with less hassle. Do be careful when rebooting, because as it says in the warning, all motion and communication will immediately stop. 
Clicking this reset button is like pulling out the power plug on the controller. Help documentation for the web server is found in the manual for MotionWorks IEC hardware configuration, document SIA-IEC-4 in section 2, and within the help system of MotionWorks IEC hardware configuration. Thanks for watching this video, and remember yaskawa.com/iec for application notes, videos, firmware updates, and more.